this is what I was talking about, about the extra copper. See all of this green here that's turned pink? This is um, additional copper that it adds, which means when you develop the printed circuit board and manufacture it, you use less chemicals to get the finished product. So as you can see, it, it sort of fills everything in. But I don't like that. And to be honest, for the size of the board that we're making, this really isn't necessary. So we'll delete that. And as you can see, we've now got the tracks. So we'll go back to the normal view. Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold. And what we're now going to do is we're going to spin the components around in a way which I think is more suitable for this board and try and minimize the size of the board. So I'm going to spin this switch around with this button that way. I'm going to move it up a little bit, I think. About there. I'm going to put the battery here, I think. Uh, let's move this one along a bit more. Notice how it's converted the what were tracks into green lines. These are what are called the rat nests. And before, when I was explaining about rat's nests and how you could just use those and not let it position anything, it would give you just the components with the rat nests and then you would draw your circuit board on and position them how you want it. Um, so let's spin this around a bit. Sometimes the placement of the components isn't always really that logical um, and so I find you can nearly nine times out of ten get a better placement yourself. Um, and it's just a case really of looking at where the tracks go and working out what might be a better position for them. So I think that can go up there. I'm just trying to squash it up really, save on uh, printed circuit board and obviously save on costs really. I think the LED can go just there. Yeah, that'll do. And this resistance, turn this one around. That one can go just there, I think. So, now what we need to do is we need to go project, PCB components, and then auto root. So I'll root them. Again, single sided, normal tracks. Oops, okay. And as you can see, it's got 100% straight away. And that's just with positioning the components a bit differently. Um, and yeah, it's really as simple as that. I'm still not particularly happy with the um, positioning of these because see this track here. I'm pretty sure you can just sort of bring that down and through here. If we modify this track here, add a little node, it's just a little point of connection, and then we want this track, so we click this little track button here, and where was it going? It's going from here. So I reckon we can draw a track down here. Where's it going to there? In fact, it can connect straight to there. So we'll connect that, right click to stop, click this little selection tool here, and then we can delete this track completely because that's it's unnecessary, it's not needed. And then this track here, I think we can move that up a little bit because likewise that's not necessary. And also, we can move this resistor up here a little bit, possibly. No, I'll, I'll leave that as it is. Then, I can move this track in a little bit. I'm just really trying to minimize the size of the board here, so I can shrink the board down a little bit more now. 
zoom in on it to objects so it's nice and big. This one's quite straight. It really bugs me when lines aren't perfectly 45 degrees <laughs> um, or obviously 90. So now if we go to project and then we go to PCB components and we can do a quality check. This is ensuring that the board is correct and that it's connected up how it is on the circuit. Because when you manipulate the circuit, you might move something and disconnect something without realizing, or connect something up incorrectly by mistake. And this just checks it against the circuit diagram and says, yeah, that's correct or no, as the case might be. So a quality check, it's asking what we want to call it. It wants to do a connectivity check, checking from circuit diagram check if the values are correct. I mean, I doubt the values would be wrong because we haven't done anything with those, but even so. And then do a layout check, so we'll go OK. And it produces the report, which as you can see, no issues found on any of the uh, checks. That's what you want to see. You want to see a report that says no issues found in all of the areas. If there are issues found, then read what they say and try and rectify them or just check because sometimes it'll say hang on a minute this track isn't connected to say pin 5 of the chip when in actual fact it is it's just going a slightly different route and it's say connecting via a pin of a different component and so it's like oh hang on a minute it's connecting to this component and not this pin when in actual fact if you trace it out it is actually correct but um, for this it's actually working so we'll close that and that's really it for this video in the next video I'll show you how to test the PCB layout as it is now and we can look at using some virtual instruments testing it mm -hmm.